No need. <laughs> the red light's going try. You want to bring us in? Red light district. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sandcast Experience. Oh, the experience. With Theo Bruner. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the intro's been upgraded that was too. It. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I kept it nice and upgrade. sharp today for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is your second time, so your second time on is, is more of an experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, first time we we intro you to the test of the waters into yeah. our fans, see if you get some good download numbers. To the backstory, you were pretty good. Surprisingly, everyone wants to listen to you. Yeah, that's a surprise. My <laughs> wife would be the most surprised of that <laughs> that group. Yeah, she tells you you're boring. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty boring, so on I can surface, type, I on, can the type on a phone <laughs> when no one's around. <laughs> so brave in Let's that say, in that format. Your <laughs> Instagram is definitely, uh, I think, the funniest account in beach volleyball. I, think I appreciate that. that. Yeah. yeah, you got some good ones. Like I, I have a really small, dedicated uh, audience. <laughs> it's yeah. not the best for like sponsors <laughs> and all that stuff, but. Like, I, I really don't like social media, so yeah. when I started doing it and I started posting, I was like, F it, I'm just going to, like, be writing whatever I want, because <laughs> otherwise, my soul can't handle just, like, right. took a ninth, oh, even yeah. though ninth means, or, like, just a top a ten when a one ninth one is, match. like, top twelve, right? So it's right. like, do you really know you're top ten? <laughs> and then, like, a lot of lessons to learn from that finish, like, yes. I think I did that once, and I was just like, I... I can't do this anymore. Yes. <laughs> Just looked at myself in the mirror and was like, right, who are you? <laughs> That's so good. That's like exactly what we've always tried to get away from yeah. with the podcast is like... <laughs> Just the whole, like, you know, it's uh, another day on the beach, you know, it's a beautiful day and there's sunshine, I have nothing to complain about. It's like, all right, you just told us nothing. You yeah. gave us nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yet I'll still throw out some of those posts, you know, I'm just, I feel like I should post something. And I just yeah. do well, something. And you got you have more sponsors than me, so hey. <laughs> there we go. But you do have one. Uh, turn your hat back oh around real quick. Give give well, Laird some love. It's a pretty dope sponsor. Okay, Laird. Literally the the greatest sponsors ever. Like <laughs> they love us, we love them. It's great clothes. Yeah. Uh, it was kinda like a match made in heaven because Hermosa we did a one off with them just for that tournament. I ended up losing early. Um, not as early as you guys, but, uh, but early. Um, we rolled through. Well, yeah. we had to play and then you for, rolled through us. We had to play for like seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah, it was seven. But we ended up winning the tournament, and then we got like a, a voicemail from Gabby and Laird. They were all stoked. Made a little post about like we won one for the dads or whatever, and they were into it. And we talked and set up something long term. So it's just like a match made in heaven. We love it. So okay. Laird, I love you. And, love you <laughs> and have you, you haven't gotten up to the house yet, right? To the pool or whatever? No, but uh, we're going to contact Gabby and try and get out there. Yeah. So we got to do it because we had Gabby on the podcast when got the pool workout in. It's, it's just a good experience, good vibes. Yeah. How just was like, it for you? I know Tri's going to be at home in the pool. Cause he's a dolphin. good swimmer. I'm pretty comfortable in water. You're up yeah, there? I wasn't. Okay. He's as a little weird in waves, tri- but <laughs> <laughs> water. Yeah, trying to pop good. up on a wave is something special every time. <laughs> but water, water, I was good. The funny thing is, like, I think I had the biggest trust issues. There was this thing we did where you had to explode out of the pool and do like a like a military press, and then you had okay. to let the weights just drop. And I kept trying to like wrestle them down, and so. When you just let them drop, the weights just take you straight down to the bottom, and then you pop back up. And here's okay. Try just like boing, boing. And I was like, okay, that's really easy. Now I'm back here, and I'm just like sinking sideways. And I'm, <laughs> then I'm like overcompensating. And then I start like laughing, but you have to do like 10 reps on it. Like you're getting one breath when you come up. And so when you laugh, you lose all of your right. breath. And so it takes an adjustment period, but it's fun. And, and how deep is that pool? It gets to like 13. Yeah, let's say the deep end is. That's my big question mark. One of those things when you get old, there's like a lot of things when you get old. Yeah. Like going on at the theme park, like <laughs> spinny rides, you're yeah. just like, F this. Like, <laughs> when you were a little totally. kid, you're just like, what's wrong with you, mom? Totally. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be like that but when I'm, I'm older. Like, 
Yeah, one too many times, you're just like, oh, this, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. like, literally, my ears have like calcified the inner ear, and I can't do this anymore. <laughs> but there's that, and then diving in deep water, yeah. I get water in my ear. Okay. I'm worried. So I might bring some earplugs, but we'll see. But then I don't bring know if they're going to think too. I'm Just show them the death. snorkel on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just swim cap. Yeah. yeah. Swim cap. Yeah, they're got pretty... Um, Gockles earplugs. They're pretty accommodating. <laughs> just tell them you're from they're Connecticut, like, and they'll yeah, maybe they start to like really cool, interesting people. The more so. I like started to do it more comfortably like Laird's like no take this weight take this weight yeah. like here's a 55 I'm like all right <laughs> this is never ending is it they just give you weight until you, you're not good at and, it anymore. and Laird's so intense you're just like yes sir I'll yeah. take it <laughs> yes drill sergeant <laughs> yeah. we show up he just like pops his head out of the sauna from like 100 yards away he just his, their dog just came up to like lick us and jump on us and he just yells at the dog hey Get off the wall! <laughs> and then and then slams the door. the door. Didn't even like say hi. What's up, guys? Hi, <laughs> just, Get off of that! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's Laird Hamilton right there. <laughs> and then when we walked into the sauna, he's like, "Get in quick, close the door!" Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. the heat up. Yes. <laughs> like having a heart attack walking into a 210 degree sauna. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. It's it's a lot of fun, though. And they're such good people, as like yeah. you know yeah, yeah. already. I don't know how much you've gotten to interact with them, but they're just we, met, we did like a, a, a beach cleanup with Laird Apparel. Okay. And they came down, we got to talk, and they're super like interesting, genuine seeming yeah. people. So I was fired Where up. Where was I, the I, yeah. beach cleanup? Down here? Manhattan Beach. Oh, Manhattan. Nice. Dirty beach. So <laughs> I cleaned that up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably picked up like three pieces of trash. Under the pier is nasty. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's because the rest homeless sleep is under pretty there. clean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I want to get in the ocean with Laird. Yeah. Like, that would be an experience. He'd be super intense. Yeah, but he's like foiling all of you. He's can't like an hang exclusive foiler now, isn't he? Yeah. Cause Stand it's, up? you move faster. I think he just <laughs> needs like speed or big <laughs> yeah. things or like something yeah. crazy has got to be happening around yeah. him. You could tell he was kind of like bored at the house. Just like let's jack this sauna heat up, or like yeah. let's put put more ice. You're like sitting in there, like okay, I'm dealing with the ice, and then he comes and stirs it. He's like, "How's that feel? You comfortable? Okay, then then we got to do something different if you're comfortable." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, good stuff. That's a good sponsor. Yeah, good year for you guys. That was another big win getting Laird Apparel. But you guys had yeah. you guys had a great year. Good year, good year. Yeah, if not for uh, trying Trevor kind of ruining it for us <laughs> a little bit. But you guys um, won the first half. We won the first half. If you include kind international, which you kind of got probably, it with how much weight. Or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but then you guys winning whatever the last two, three, or four. three, three. No, or four. Uh, Phoenix. I guess doesn't count, right? Phoenix, yeah, <laughs> no. it doesn't count. Yeah, whatever. We beat you in the game that was for like seven hundred dollars each, <laughs> and you were the best <laughs> skyballer. Yeah, it was, was two for two skyballing. So. <laughs> I wish I practiced more. I was a little embarrassed of that. <laughs> those were pretty good they're easy to pass indoors i didn't do but those it was like in. yeah i've been messing with the sky ball because i think it would be good like it's just a good serve if it you're is. pretty good at it yeah. yeah but there's a certain height where it's like super easy but you really gotta like you gotta jam it to get up into like yeah. the upper atmosphere where people like double take and then the wind can take it yeah but I didn't do that, so I kept it safe. <laughs> but I was actually like hoping that you make it, because like if all four of us just step up and miss it in front of the crowd, I was yeah. like, "This, these guys are they even what good are at these guys doing? <laughs> what are these guys? Doing? That's why I like the the Vancouver Open rules, where when you skyball, it's like etiquette is you have to play it. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, really? And so our first match, like dive out of bounds, which I didn't realize. So our first match of the day. Um, we were up like twenty to seven for a match point, and so we're, uh, this guy hits this. Um, Rafi hits this sky ball that like almost goes into the lake or the ocean. And this dude runs and plays it. And we're like, holy shit, he played it. And then this guy is setting him from like behind his umbrella, sets it. The guy comes in, like has a crazy long approach and just like taps this thing in the seam. Me and Rafi are just standing there like we let it go down. So they, they score. They hit a sky ball. Rafi gets out of the way and it lands in bounds. I was like, Raph, this dude just played one from right. the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't play one that's in bounds. Like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that's the rule. That's bad dying. Vancouver karma right there. Yeah. So that's yeah. why Troy kept the van open rules when he played uh, Casey's Skyball. That was about eight feet out of bounds. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that was a pure entertainment match. Yeah. For those two, at least. Yeah. Not oh, their man. partners. That last point, though. <laughs> 
Andy retiring two different players. Yeah. <laughs> tries to poach the middle serve and gets gets aced. <laughs> end Is of that career. what happened at the end of <laughs> yeah. next two? We're all watching and we're just like, ooh. Yeah, we're all like, let him take <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And then Chase, I mean, Chase, it was almost Casey's last swing. He just took it straight off the forehead. Yeah. As a defender, you just get frozen, just foreheaded it. That reaction from Casey, too, was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, just forfeit, bro. End on that play right there. <laughs> just call that's it. A, that's a fitting way for Casey to go. Yeah. It was funny. When we had you on last time, actually, it was like right before the Champions Cup. And you played with Casey in that one, right? Because mm-hmm. I remember at the time, you had no idea like what your plans were. You're like, maybe I'll play yeah. with Tim Baumgren. And, yeah. And then... Well, yeah, I was going to do international with Miles Evans. Okay. And uh, Tim Baumgren for AVPs. Yeah. Then COVID happened. And then, yeah, basically that was like super tough to get in the main draw for. And I think I still was like missing a tournament or something in my my AVP points. Um, so me and Tim would have been just out. And then, I don't know, Casey drew, drew me up in the main draw. So Tim understood. He's a very understanding partner. <laughs> for sure. So, <laughs> so that, yeah, that partnership just never saw the light of day. So <laughs> it was just... I trained with them a couple times because my sister's from Minnesota. Yeah. A lot of fun. But, yeah, we didn't get to play together. So, <laughs> too bad. It's, it's A lot's happened since we had you on. That's why it probably feels yeah. since so much longer because COVID is just that time warp that we talk about all the time. It's just the black hole, just missing from everyone's lives. And then <laughs> Yeah, I just I didn't know if I'd ever have, like, a good, like, serious partner yeah. again. Um, and I found one. You did. Going strong two Canadian. years now. Yeah. Watch, she's going to dump me like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, love, love you came. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, no small risk to take partnering with Kame, though. And I mean, you, you know, points. like battling yeah. in country quarters. And I was just coming Jeez. off. Uh, like Reed also didn't have any points in 2019. Yeah. So we had to start, you know, from kind of from the bottom. And then Kame and I had to start from the bottom. Um and we didn't even know you guys had our spot in the country quota. You and Billy. <laughs> and then right. I guilted Billy into it. Yeah. I was like, Billy, don't freaking do this. Let me I'll hit. hate you forever. You guilt tripped him. <laughs> no, no, no. He's too nice. Not like that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we swooped in there, had a good couple tournaments. Uh, but yeah, we were just country quotas and qualifiers. And you mofos beat us too <laughs> in Russia. Oh, that's, that's one right. of the top, top. Mm, top three worst losses ever for me. Just yeah, being in Russia. S- yeah. Yeah, being that far, going that far and losing to one of the lower uh, ranked yeah, U.S. teams. To just teams. horrible, horrible players. <laughs> <laughs> to some trash party teams. I don't know if I had ever lost to Adam, too, at that point. Well, how many times would you could you have played Adam by that point, though? I played I played him more, I think, when I was with, like, Todd Rogers and stuff, like, okay. back in, like, 2014, 13. Okay. So it doesn't really count, but... <laughs> but yeah, I hadn't lost to him up until that game. Who was so. A-Rob playing with back then? I don't yeah, like, remember I playing with A-Rob. He had like Marty Lorenz at one point. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, the, he was playing with a Russian. The Russian guy. Uh, the server. Oh, that guy. Oh my gosh. That's going to kill me. Andre Belov? Andre yeah. Belov. Yeah. Good job, Theo. That's Mr. Right. Service Ace. Yeah. yeah. Ace her out. Yeah, Ace her out. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Evandro. Yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> seriously. Now Evandro's got a new guy, I guess. Who's he? So yeah, I heard yeah, the, the Brazilians. What are the Brazilians up? doing? Yeah, Al Son's going back to Alvaro. Uh, uh, I think Bruno and Simon are Evandro's sets were too good for Alvaro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that guy is so hard to stop when he's out of system. And so, like, I don't know, not elite in system. Alvaro? Out of system, he's unbelievable. That's so it's almost one of those guys it. that, like, with a high bump set, he's better. So he loves the Allison bump chow. Right. Loves it. <laughs> Just loves it. <laughs> huh. Interesting, yeah. So I mean, who's Evandro playing with? This guy named Vinicius. Oh, he's just picking up a new guy? Yeah, I'd never heard of him. Interesting. Yeah, but I mean, one team that's definitely not going to break up, Andre and George, they're, they've had a great year. They kind of... they played great. Yeah, they're a crazy team because they, they've been together for a while, and they, like kind of never got it going uh maybe they would have got it going in world champs they lost you guys right up 14 10 to go to the semis oh yeah we stopped uh, that momentum but that was like their best tournament and they were always kind of like ninth guys like yeah. 13th um and then all of a sudden i think i don't know if i'm guessing off the top of my head i feel like george kind of ascended yes and like 
became like that much better at side out defense yeah. and his serve is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just kind of put it steady. all together finally. Yeah. Really efficient and steady, like always in the right spot. If he's there, if he gets a touch on it, it's going to be a good touch. Yeah. It's not going to get blocked a lot, make a lot of errors. And Andre's like sneaky good. I always like feel like they're not arm. as good as they are. And then yeah. now you just can't question how good they are. Yeah. And then we've yeah. played them. Like last time we played them, Ostrava, um, they just kind of handled us. That was like our last match for Olympic qualifying. Okay. And they're just like, every contact was just good. They, they got like a semi finish in that one. Top four, I, I think. Figure. I think I stopped paying attention when. Yeah, they. That's like. Yeah, maybe that was great. Right they started playing really well, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you guys played them well at yeah, World Champs. I mean, you guys had a great tournament. Oh, man. Yeah. I went back and watched that. And uh, that's one of those games I feel like we've. Would have won. Like, if we went back in time and played that a bunch of times, we would have won it yeah. a bunch of times. Like, all the kind of stuff that could have gone either way. Went for them in the second set. We had a bunch of chances to, like, get up by a couple. Um, but then to end the match, George started going off on a serve. That was yeah. a big difference maker in the game. But, yeah, that was, that was a fun match. Yeah. I remember, I mean, that first set, I can't remember if I was just watching or commentating it, but I think that first set might have been the best volleyball I've ever seen you and Kane play. You guys just, you handled them. We played really well in that first set. Um, yeah. But that whole that whole match, actually, we, we played well yeah. going back. Like even though we lost, it was like could be proud of the match that we played. We didn't like the previous one to go to the finals. We were less proud of <laughs> that one. Maybe we were a little bit angsty, angstier that, than normal. Was that Vitor? Vitor and, and Nato. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was that was good. That's right. World champs, man. That was, that's your second fourth, too. My second fourth. <laughs> we have three fourths in world champs yeah, I know. sitting on these couches right now. We're 0-6 oh, for medals <laughs> yeah. at world champions. <laughs> world championships. Oh, man. And I have a fifth on top of that, too. And I've never done anything but lose to Brazil in those matches. So. Ooh, they have Andro, uh, Pedro you and Nick, Evandro. You and Nick versus Pedro Evandro. And Evandro had like six aces in a row. Insane. Oh. Um, insane serving run. Guto. Or sorry, not Guto. Alisson Bruno. That was when they were at the peak of their powers. Um, yeah, and then Bitor and Andre George. So Wow. <laughs> and, and I think you might have I mean, you might have had every Brazilian team at the peak of their powers because Vitor and Hinata, that was the best that they have they'd ever played. I mean they came in, they were yeah. like the, I don't know, the fifteen seed or something. Yeah. They take second and Yeah, they played great. So I haven't seen them since. I don't know if they've played since World Champs. I think they played at least once, maybe twice, okay. and maybe got a couple of ninths or something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure. I feel like Vitor's been, like, every time I see him, like, this guy's just a really good volleyball player, but he's, like, the ultimate tweener. Where yeah. it's like, yeah. oh, he's a little too small up at the net, and then it's like, he's not the most polished defender, but then every once in a while, like, he comes back and has yeah. these big finishes, and yeah. I was worried that Hinata would just drop him after this run and like get picked up by one of the big guys and like damn it Vitor got <laughs> Poor short guy. end of the stick again. Yeah. I like that guy. He, he hustles. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And Hinata is good. He's good. He's legit. Huh? He's ridiculous. Yeah, A really good blocker, good defender, and I love his arm swing. Yes, as it an is arm swing so nerd, I, I love it. Yeah. Did, did you play them in uh, Itapema? We did. We played them in the, the like, with these challengers. There's that match. So you win your first one, you get to ninth. So that yeah. first match is huge in the modified pool. And then you play one to win the pool, which only guarantees you, like, a little bit better chance at a better draw. Right. Um, so I don't think it was – I don't think either of us cared all that much. Right. But we stomped them in that one. We played really well. Um but like, but then I think we almost got like a harder draw than they did, so it was all like for nothing. Yeah. So well, <laughs> Itapema was nuts because um, Berlin Lojak played Perisic and Schweiner for like a ninth or something. Either in the first round or like the lucky loser round. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and it, went, and it went like all the way. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Twenty fourteen draws are brutal because there's no you don't get rewarded for winning pool. Exactly. Yeah. That second match yeah. is just kind of whatever. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah, and then the tie breaks are all weird in that, too. Like, 
me and Kane thought in uh, Tlaxcala that we wouldn't have to play the lucky loser match. But then we found out it was only set ratio. Points didn't matter. Yeah. Um, but then in World Champs, um, or wait, yeah. But then in World Champs, like, it's the opposite of that. So, like, it's weird they don't have, like, one system for tie breaks. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what, man, when I'm commentating Elite 16s and there's two teams or three teams that are one and one. And so I'm like, all right, well, if this team wins, then they're in, but maybe not. Or if there's a team that's 2-0, and oh, a team that's 1-1. One and, yeah. one. So uh, and I'm not a big fan of so that. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to have to be doing like a beautiful mind stuff. And the team, the player shouldn't. It's just so have think to. about it's what so fans are thinking too. Yeah. I know. Like, they can't follow it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really difficult. You, like, sort of know, now that we know the system, you can sort of be aware of, like, okay, if we do this plus minus, we're in good shape. If we don't, we're not. But, uh, but yeah, for us, like, in Latvia, we, uh, we lost, or no, we beat Germany, and then we lost 2-1 to Brower Musen, but we won the point ratio. Yeah. So we're like, all right, if there's a tie, like, they're out. Like, we basically won as long as there's a tie. Yeah. And there was. There was a three-way tie, and we got first. So. Yeah. <laughs> And that, like, Brower Musen won their first two. You beat them in the third, right? In your no, third match? No, we Is lost it... to them in the second. They lost to Germany okay. in the third. Okay. Um, so they went, yeah. They went two and one. They were really close to going three and oh, two. It was a really close match. Yeah. And then um, they were out. And then and they instead. were out. Yeah. Then they're done. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, uh, I was calling this match the last round of pool of Hamburg, and it was uh, Cindy Tillman and Svenja Muller against the young Spanish girls who are doing really well, Danielle Alvarez and Tanya Moreno. And all the Germans had to do was, I think they had to win by five. Okay. So they win the first set, like 25-23 or something, and they were up 20-15. to 15. And so really all they had to do was just side out, and they had, I think, two or three chances to side out and break full. And, no way. And uh, it was like shank ace, block, dig conversion. And it's probably like... Eight people watching that were aware yeah. of the stakes. And so they're just gonna say eight people watching. So, <laughs> of so, the eight of twenty. <laughs> yeah. So I was calling it, and I didn't know this. Like I didn't know that that was a point thing. And I guess the on court MC knew, and he was like, "Okay, this point, girls, we need this point because it was in Hamburg, and they had a pretty good crowd in Hamburg as always." And um, so after like, the Germans end up winning, but they're just so sad. And I was like, "I wonder why they're so sad. Like they just won like two and one in pool." And then I have a like a reporter down there who always gets quotes after and he like does the press releases for volleyball world and he calls me and he's like you didn't have any idea like what was on the line at 2017 did you i was like no what was on the line other than like you have three more shots at it he's like everything was oh, on God. the line <laughs> i didn't know yeah i heard there's a little talk of possibly making those tournaments 24 teams i saw that um I don't know if they'll do the same the... like challenger format or what. Well, because everyone's obviously not happy, right, with everything in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead of doing the four team qualifier for four teams like they're doing, they're talking about maybe adding more teams. Yeah, I think it's undecided, but at the very mm-hmm. least, like it's just lame. At least the old pool system, you had to be last to be out. So like, yeah, it's less. You feel like it's less unfair if you lose a tie break, but you're fourth. Right. As opposed to like you're tying for like first or whatever, and then you're out. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's, it's a little bit brutal. So. Yeah, you tie for first, then yeah. you're out. That happened to uh, Paris and Schweiner this last weekend in Paris. Uh, they're yeah. the one seed, went two and one, gone. Oh, they're the one one seed. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it's. I can't and, keep track. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it changes fast. I didn't bother well, looking. It's so fast now. Yeah, we yeah. have three out of four. <laughs> yeah, it's two bad tournaments and you're in bad shape. Yeah, <laughs> you're in trouble. That's what. Uh, it's part of why we're not playing. Right Stan now. and <laughs> Schoon. I mean, they were the 11 seed in Paris in the main draw, and they were like one bad tournament. Like we're back in the yeah. qualifiers, and they won. It was their fourth final, and they were almost in the qualifiers again. <laughs> Holy moly! <I> feel like <laughs> that's Bru- ridiculous. Bru- so must have been like top five, and then qualifier, and then top five again. Yeah. But they went and won a couple, like, challengers, I think. Yeah. But they got last in world champs, I think, right, in their pool. That pool was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That was gnarly, yeah. Because <laughs> they had Baron Horse Vandyveld, right? Yeah. And Schachter, Deering, and one other very good team. And we had yeah. Colombia and Thailand or something. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky bastards. <laughs> so. 
Better be lucky than Sweden. Good, Sweden like broke their yep. wrist before the tournament. <laughs> my oh Swedish my bloodline came through for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they they came back. At least they, we got COVID uh, and had to those pull guys out. were good. Yeah, yeah. they came back uh, first tournament back won uh, European champs. Oh really? Yeah. Beat Norway. Beat Norway in the Beat semis. Norway. Nice. I think someone was hobbled. And that, right? I think was still sick because they pulled out of uh, Hamburg. After they played Brown Musen for like three points, and they pulled out of Hamburg, and then European champs was that week. And Anders and Christian were uh, split blocking for a lot of European champs. Oh, really? Um, so okay. I think it was. I think one of them was sick. I don't okay. know which one, but but still, <laughs> to beat Anders and Christian at whatever percentage yeah. health, <laughs> for sure, it's no small feat. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, are you guys planning on playing? Orlando? Is that what it's called? AVP Orlando? Central Florida. AVP Central Florida? Yeah. (laughs) In the rec center open? (laughs) Yes. No, I don't actually know where it is. (laughs) I think so, Um, but it's definitely not a priority at all. Yeah. I told Kame we have to split block (laughs) (laughs) so that I can see if I get more digs than him and (laughs) hold it over him for the rest of his life. Um, (laughs) Strictly the only reason. But we definitely, like... I don't think we'll like seriously be training for yeah. it. Maybe we'll use it, get like a two-week training camp, work on some random skill we want to do, like, right. um, and then play. But we're not gonna like try and peak for it or anything yeah. like so that. So you're in yeah. full-blown off season for the yeah, most part yeah. right now. Yeah. What about you guys? <laughs> we weren't, and then we just <laughs> then we booked our flights, and we're like, wait, why are we going again? <laughs> so we have little yeah, little knickknack things we that are bugging us. Nothing too big, but yeah. we're just like booking these flights for all this money, and I'm like, well, how much can we make? And then, like, okay, we're not playing for money, obviously. And then it's like, what do we have to do to get the points that we want? <laughs> and then get closer to dropping our world champs finish. I was like, yeah. I don't know why we're doing this. To be honest, let's just rest up and like, I feel bad because I feel like the season's not quite done, and we didn't really earn the break quite as much. But for you guys, it makes a ton of sense to keep your world champs finish. But for us, it was like, this doesn't feel right, but <laughs> let's do it. In the end, like... <laughs> this is the year to do it. With the three out of four <laughs> in qualification coming up, I feel like always the right decision is just to be as healthy right. and, and, like, ready to go as uh-huh. possible. Because, again, with the three out of four, like, you get hot for just a couple tournaments and you're right up there again. Yeah. And so then you have a, take much. another yeah. bad two tournaments <laughs> and you just wasted all those. They're, they're gone. But, yeah, if you if you, like... Yeah, played all these tournaments, but then you're a little bit injury plagued next right. year. It wouldn't have been worth it, I right. don't think. Yeah. So Trevor will hit the gym real hard, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fact that we laughed, though. That was yeah. Funny. <laughs> yeah. His off season workout, uh, I train with his trainer in Hawaii. Yeah. And if, if we can get him in the gym with his trainer, it's great. Yeah. His in season, <clears throat> uh, I know. Theo you can tell problems. us about that one. You should do some form of leg lifting. Like anything. <laughs> just any little thing. Just look at those legs. Just, shouldn't be giving him this intel, but I know he won't take Don't it. Don't tell him the secret. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't thought about telling him that yet. <laughs> but you guys, you at least have the added uh, thing to weigh of whether to qualify for World Tour Finals. You were kind of chatting about that when uh, you were talking to maria but oh yeah because i mean you guys two more good finishes and you'd be kind of in the mix and that's yeah i think right around if we got a couple fifths or better um or that kind of average we would have a very good shot of being in so and it's a lot of money um it's like 75 k five each 150 one to the winning team jesus christ massive I mean, I can't be mad at that. Yeah. No, I wish I, I mean, was in so position that, for it. Yeah, that was that was in our head a little bit. Um, but, yeah, uh, off season. I really, yeah. really want to go to an Olympics, so that's a priority. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, it was it was tempting for sure to go for that. So. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, I mean, I've never seen money like that in a beach volleyball tournament. 150 grand to win? I mean, that's that Qatar that's money, an enormous I guess. sum of yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's almost annoying because you're like, why would you put that much money in a tournament? And then we're all just like <laughs> losing so much money yeah. playing challengers. <laughs> like, it yeah. is a little weird. Like I like, I definitely think we need, tour. yeah, we need tournaments like that, like for fans and everything. But like, 
I don't even know if this tournament like is everyone really gonna watch? Like, are they in January? Like, yeah, it's. I feel it's like there's no random. way there's gonna be a lot of people in Qatar watching. There's like, like there's that no should have been the world yeah. champs purse, in yeah. my opinion. Like, jack that thing up. That's the real big one that everyone's watching. That really matters. Yeah. World Tour Finals too. I like it. I like it. But when I when we went, <clears throat> it was like uh, twenty grand for third. Yeah. And then me and Hayden, the next year it was like. 50 grand for third the very next year That's when I was bronze. out. <laughs> yeah. I That's a like, big bronze. The wrong year. <laughs> Still 20 for third is pretty dang good too. Yeah, but not when the it's winners not... got 100. Yeah. Through the, the good and old days. One match there away. used to be some grand slams where the winners would oh. get 100. But That's then right. even like the smaller ones were like 70. There was like three of them in a year where you get like a ninth. Yeah. You're like, damn it. I mean, oh, I made 8,500 bucks. I one of those and yeah, I made like 25 each. It was yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah, how's that? That was uh, good old days. Grand slams. That's part of what makes your Instagram good is those uh, those posts where you are showing the old prize money. <laughs> where I just showed the old money versus the new money. I got. I, I've never been direct messaged so many times by players. <laughs> like it's like Why'd everybody. You show me it that? was either like people with like sad face emojis being like, right. oh, I miss those days, or younger guys being like, what the fuck. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those! I didn't know how good we had it back Phil then. Phil and Todd and them were like just cleaning up everything at that time. Like, imagine how much money Anders and Christian have missed out on by being born a decade too late. I mean, like yeah. a lot of money. Well, yeah, they probably would have made double easily. at least. Yeah, yeah. at well, least because um, I just did a story on them uh, after Paris because uh, they won, and I looked at their run in 2018 when they won Stad Vienna Hamburg back to back to back, and they split. 230 grand for winning those three in a row. And that, that, was in like a, that was in a four-week span. Oh, the Grand Slams. Because it, it wasn't... It, that was the Beach Major Series. Those were like... Wait, was 50, that pre-Star System? It was... Pre-Star? That was Star System. Oh. Those Star System was like, Rio. quote-unquote, the five stars back then. Oh. Yeah. But those were like okay, 55, yeah. I think, if you won. Hamburg, 50 55. Hamburg was big. And then I think you're right. The other ones were... Like in the fifties, and then Hamburg was huge. I think we yeah. got twenty for bronze. Oh yeah, the World Tour Finals they made a hundred. Yeah, think. yeah. Huh. So that was that was a big year uh, yeah. for them. To yeah, win. But so I looked then, at that, yeah. I was like, that's a that's a good month. Two ten, yes. then. 55, <laughs> like, 55, Yeah, that's a pretty good month. <laughs> that's a good month. <laughs> and that's when they were like twenty one. Yeah, they had nothing to do with them. They're <laughs> still living guys. at home. Love those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so good and friendly. <laughs> Anders is sneaky mean. Is he? I'm telling you. All probably. those good ones. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Christian's just, just nice. Annoyingly nice. Anders? He's behind he's the scenes. Something. I bet he's mean. I'm just trying to find a reason to hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, though. If you, yeah, I know. It's the worst when they're winning and they're really nice. Yeah. There's got to be something. Guys, Message yeah. us if, uh, yeah. if you know any yeah. dirt on those guys. Yeah. Anything on the Norwegians. <laughs> because, like, they, I mean, we had Anders and Christian on the podcast when they came in for Vegas. And Hawaii, uh, yeah. Um, and then I didn't, I didn't talk to him or seen him until we were in Sochi. And like they come right out, they're like, "Hey, Travis, like, how you doing?" I was like, "Oh, you remember me?" <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. And I always th- like we've been around long enough to where they were like kids when we started. Basically, like, they were probably like fifteen, sixteen, or whatever. Did yeah. I watch you and John play them in uh, Vienna? I think no, um, Klagenfurt. Klagenfurt, yeah. 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 2015. They they I was like, they said that's their best good. match of their. I mean, big. That was the biggest win of their career at that time, because we were doing pretty well and and they were. I think they brand won one of those tour. sets on a trickle or something. Maybe I remember being that was very one of the frustrated. Matches, one of the very first ones where I was like, "Fucking trickle aces, ruin this game." Because <laughs> it was such an awesome game. It was yeah. like tit for tat, going extra. I think th- it went three, right? I think so. Um, but maybe it was like the second set. One of the f- first two sets was super close, back and forth, like a lot of good plays, and it's just decided on a trickle. You're just like, well, mm. it's lame. <laughs> that was a good match. How do we eliminate the trickle? Adam Roberts has the he has the perfect rule for it. If you play it, then it counts. Up if, to the if offense. If you let it go it. It, and don't touch it, it's a redo. So okay. if it's like a small trickle, it makes it easier. Yeah. But then again, then it's like as you're serving, you're like, oh, now it's a free ball because of the tape. 
Yeah, but I've had a couple. Duncan Budinger hit one in the Manhattan qualifier. Mm. He hit this one. That, it was one of those where it like hits the tape going one way and just zings the other. Yeah. And oh, I was yeah. like going this way no and chance. it just like pegs me yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. So that would have been a nice. So sometimes it can make it harder. I like when the, the passer overruns it. Like it, <laughs> they think it's going to go shorter and it pops like, <laughs> yeah. but they're already falling forward and just Dude, yeah. do some. I think Cameron had one of those in uh, Manhattan. Can't. Something happened where I trickle. It wasn't that oh, hard, but he overran oh, it or something. God, yeah. And then you did something, and then I watched that video a couple times. That Let's was, relive that. There's really no excuse for that one. I think maybe we were I just. Did, so I was like, like how did we I were just so get rattled. There, it bounced really high in the air, right? Just like two steps to the right of where he was. Yeah. But like he had already kind of gone down, and then was like, it was just it was a strange yeah. scenario. You didn't have much just uh, like swung much it backwards going your way at that point. That was, yeah. <laughs> It's funny going back and watching that. Like one of the first plays of the game, Trevor hits like a over angle when we did like an obvious angle right. that came in the line block, and it like barely hits the line. I'm just like, man, everything could have been different if that hit May- was out. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I, I <laughs> was like, I was Trevor. thinking like, okay, energy might shift. Like obviously yeah. everything's going our way. Energy might shift, and then like at some point, like Trevor had like a over on two tomahawk back that you, you guys, guys had, I was like cool wow players. now nothing can yeah. go wrong right here <laughs> <laughs> yeah he had one yeah where he jumped backwards hit it it hit like right on the tape on the net yeah. and then you were able to pop it up and then you yeah. guys scored the point yeah there was some crazy maybe you blocked ones. came like in transition yeah in the trans yeah, yeah 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 was uh was Trevor's he was intending to set try you had the best view of the whole thing I thought it was he end. bump set it about 15 feet over the net and they called it out I thought that was in. So oh, they called it over the over antenna? Over the antenna. Because, yeah. uh, like, directly over it's supp- supposed, supposed to be out, right? right? So I think it was, like, if the Maybe antenna's here, it was kind of like this. Um, so I think technically it the was Lions out. Lions Jones felt like, bad for you guys. He's like, you know what? Let's yeah. just give them this one. It was some charity. <laughs> and, I was, and also because I was just like, no, it's out. Like, I bet if I, like, was Yeah, I think we players it, do right? that. The refs are like, okay, well, if he's not even oh, bothered totally. to move. Uh, Jake Gibb <laughs> got totally it that. that. <laughs> it's the reason he got so many calls, like, reversed and could, like, argue his way out of things. Yeah. Jake Gibb like, was In his sneaky... soul, he would believe the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or convince you that he would. <laughs> totally. And the refs are just like, I mean, he's, he's so, like, serious about this. And he's got to be right. And he's Changed. been to the Olympics, out, no like, touch. three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a George Costanza yeah, rule. I, I'd say you guys would get that call in that out of ten times. So. Yeah, I thought it was the wrong call. It wasn't worth my time arguing at that point. So yeah. Let's keep the good energy on yeah, our yeah. side here. Yeah. yeah let's just, not fire up these yeah. guys that have imploded. <laughs> 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 oh, it's the uh, Jake implied the invoked the George Costanzas. Not a lie if you believe it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> but when you, uh, I mean, you, you had done like the zero points thing with Reed. That's hard to do. And then when, when you and Cam were talking about it, were you like, oh, man, I got to do this thing again? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but at that point, I mean, I've been looking at Paris as my last run. Okay. So it was like, it was like, ah, eh, whatever. I think me and Cam can, like, like I know he's he's a good veteran player. Like, I think we can work things out. And so we just gave ourselves that first year to kind of, get in striking distance of the main draw and did that and yeah but I definitely wasn't ideal <laughs> but I was just so happy to be playing with like a really good player yeah um but yeah that that year was tough we had to play like Sweden in the first round of the qualifier in and our first tournament no after in Doha oh, yeah, and, uh, we lost in Doha in the first round of to the Spain. qualifier to Spain yeah yeah those guys they are made, good too they're good but like that's another one that like to go up like 5-1 or something in the second set. Yeah. I had a block that was out by like this much. I, I was like so all over it. And yeah. then they had all these, they had like two or three plays where the guy I hit it into his chest as he's running line and it hits the net and they get a perfect set and yeah. score. And then they barely beat us. It was like, it was one of those nightmare matches. <laughs> and they, like, how did you, I, I remember that, that guy, man. <laughs> I forget who it was, if it was where it or was amazing. but yeah, the serve, that deep seam serve was like, I've seen that guy in a lot of matches just like do crazy things with the serve. Yeah. And of course, yeah, he got it going against us too. So yeah, that guy, that guy's good. Yeah. So I mean, and you guys, like, like you said, you had some shit draws. You played Sweden in the first round of Cancun, after having to win. And we had to play Chile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you had to play the Grimalt. 
who at the time didn't seem like a bad draw, but they're right. playing great. Chile had a they, nice little dude, year and a half bad streak. Yeah. And now they're they were, good again. They were awful for like a year. Yeah. And now they're awesome. Yeah. So it's, I actually am curious to watch some video on those guys, get on Volumetrics, nerd out a little bit, yeah. and see like... Is it just like energy, or did, are they doing something different technically? Because it's a dramatic swing that they have. Yeah. They still have what's the name? Palau coaching them. Same coach. Do you know? I don't know. I don't know actually. Dude, they they did what? They won Qatar that one year, like, like twenty nineteen or, or something, yeah. and then like disappeared for a year and like couldn't win well, anything. Well, they won another one. They I think they won Sydney. Okay, two. Yeah, they won like back to back and they made another finals and then. But just then like, they kind of <laughs> like. Like went down slowly yeah. and were holding on to those big points, right? But then this time too, I was like, oh, I wonder if it was another kind of fluke because they got a third in Stad maybe. They won Stad. No, they won Stad. Yeah. Um, but they, they won Stad. Like, yeah. yeah. And but that they was played, like, really consistently well. attention. And that was thirty-two teamer too. They opened that one up. Right. Um, that was that was no joke. They beat uh, Parasich and Schweiner. That was a funky one though because. Crazy. That was when they started doing the. They hands. They started doing the hands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I Dude, that was ridiculous. Watching that. Like, you were posting about that too. That was another thing. Some, right? <laughs> some of the pool play matches where the refs were calling everything. It was unbelievable to watch. So like a lot of good teams lost because of that. Yeah. Like Nikolai Kodafava lost because they kept calling Nikolai. Yeah. Um, they kept calling Brill. They and they kept calling Schweiner. So yeah. like, and just sets. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with that. It's like they've eased up on it. It's been better. I know they've eased up, but it's still. I just. I don't agree with. Like, our ultimate goal with setting is for people to all set, like, Brower Mucin, which, like, just, like, <laughs> like, is that a beautiful thing that we want to, like, teach children to do? Like, I don't think so. I feel like we can all sort of agree that, like, down, up, like, really slow is, yeah. like, maybe a little bit funky yeah. and, like, so different from indoor that I get that they don't like that. But, like, but if you're not, like, really holding it and you just go like that or, like, yeah. running fast offense... I, think I don't setting, see why they're trying to get rid of that. I think setting should just be virtually no spin. Okay, the ball is going to move a little bit, yeah. but you can't have like a full rotation, and you can't go down. That's it. Just simple. Yeah. Like, you can go deep. Who cares? Yeah. I could catch it from my belly if I can flick it from my belly and it's clean. Who cares, right? Like, why are they? Why are we overcomplicating it? Yeah, and yeah. in the middle of the year, that was the biggest thing. It's like, why now? Yeah, and now. Yeah, well, we, we all know the answer to that. Yeah, though, it was right? uh, the uh, <laughs> Mr. Ari Grasa, Mr. President, <laughs> decided he wanted to. Just like, man, you know what? It's like what Donald did with the the serving yeah. role. He's like, I want to see a freeze. Yeah. Like, okay, I guess we got to do a freeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you probably like because you don't like the trickles. I don't like the trickles. I didn't. I wasn't a big freeze fan. Uh, separate. From losing up one set to zero in 2015 in Hawaii, Ooh. after oh, going yeah. all the way through the quality oh. and the losers bracket, Ooh. Yeah. that and one hurts. <laughs> that one hurt. <laughs> That's like, yeah, that was both like the greatest. Maybe we talked about this in 2019. I think we did. Like <laughs> one of the great. Like when I look back, I'm so proud of like the effort I put into that. But it's just so much pain thinking about that. <laughs> like, you know, like it would have been the greatest. Yeah. Like thing for me just back from the qualifier right, yeah. and like all the shit and like injuries and not getting along with reed and stuff and then we would have won out of the quality yeah. with johnny who was like 44 43 yeah. um and we lost so <laughs> and john's just like every like every match he's like on the trainer's table like <laughs> getting hydrated yeah i took a photo of him where it looked like he was passed out yeah and i was like is he gonna be okay <laughs> they're like i think so he had like a piece of bread on his chest <laughs> and I was just like, Maybe it was the bread. I don't know if he likes gluten. Maybe it was just the bread on him, and he was just like, he just passed out from fear. <laughs> he's like the ultimate uh, efficient vehicle. Where yeah. It's just if he's not working out, he just turns off fully. Just do that kind of though. I, I mean, I've always respected John, and we played together for a year. But that just added like the fact that he was willing to play with me through all those qualies. We played three together, two maybe. Um, and he didn't care and was like, F it. Like, I want to play with someone I have a chance to win a tournament with. I don't care if I'm in the main draw or not. Yeah. That, like, added to my respect f- for him. Dude, I was just thinking today, like, what we were talking about earlier with me, us not playing too many FIVBs this year and kind of just being like, yeah, you know what, let's let's chill out a little bit and just rest up. Me and Hayden played, like, 20 FIVBs. And he was, like, what, 44, 43, 44 at the time? 
2016, I think it was. We played like 20 FIVBs overseas, and he's in his 40s. And then here we are sitting at 33 being like, you know what? We're, we're getting yeah. a little older now. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we should chill out a little. I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> the guy's 17 oh, years older than like me. barely gets served, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Nick, Nick was cracking me up when we had him on here when he was in town when we did the Whiskey with the Crabs episode. Yeah. He was like, Hayden is a genius. He goes, just set everyone terrible. Yeah. And you extend your longevity. <laughs> I, was to, I was about to say that. That's why I never learned a hand set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. Oh, like, you know what? Wait, like you don't set well, but you're the best option setter in the world. Like Dude, off your Hayden, platform. It was so weird. The better the pass, the worse the set. Right. <laughs> like if you throw it 15 feet off, he's like, roll it up he's perfect. Like, a savant like he'll just he'll just jam it in there like perfectly yeah. perfect angle or like sliding onto one knee digging a cut shot and be like option yeah and you just turn and it's like right in your bread basket but then the second yeah. it's like everything's perfect <laughs> and he lines up those t-rex arms go together and you're just like <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh shit <laughs> it's all part of the plan i think he turns 50 in a couple days uh, October, October 7th. October 6th, 7th. It's my wedding day, so I'm, he always gives me shit that he had to come to my wedding on, the, on, <laughs> on his, his birthday. birthday. <laughs> so I guess I'll always remember his birthday. <laughs> Is he coming back next year? He's playing Orlando, I think, to make it his 50th. Okay. okay. Or his first, his, yeah, event first at, at 50. 50. His only. That's what he said. I don't know. It depends what Robin says. She's going to be like. Well, Suck it up, John. You're only 51. I, don't, I mean, getting into that one's not going to be easy because there's only 10 teams that are straight in. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> what, are they going to give two wild cards or is it they're earned? Four from Virginia Beach and two from Huntington. There's no wild mm. cards. Oh, so they can't even give him one. Yeah. Oof. So, because Logan's playing with Evan now. Right. So I don't know. Maybe you guys can get the band back together for one tournament. <laughs> He pays me. Split block. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you're heading up. Yeah, you're heading up, John. Sorry. <laughs> Lucena Hayden all over again. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun, actually. They went overseas. Yeah. They had a nice little overseas stint. That, that was my that was my end to beach volleyball, though. That was that both was of like, our ends, actually. Because Nick had yeah. points, and he got Hayden points by going. And then we both split. And yep. Nick went with Theo and I went with John. You played with some... Really good partners. All the good oh, yeah. partners. <laughs> Especially early on. Um, yeah, just you psychologically played. abused by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, Nick, Hayden. So, yeah, who yeah, had anyone out there, with? if you're struggling with your partner, just talk to me. I'll tell you how to deal with it. I learned over time. <laughs> so. I feel like you and Kame, you know, we've been talking about it a lot on the show this year, just because my newest theory is that like you can get two people who X's and O's wise just physical matchups should be great like an Evandro Alvaro for example but if like the emotional mental compatibility isn't there you always yeah. just you maybe be 80 to 90 percent of what you could be yeah and I feel like you and came like you, you just like you fit right in it's just kind of perfect yeah. so def- we definitely fit fit well together um and yeah it's always tough because there sort of needs to be like a leader alpha out there yeah but we don't necessarily have that like we're both kind of good at different things like i'm super calm but he kind of gets fired up which is good for us and good for me yeah because i can be too calm sometimes um but then i'm like super into the i don't know like i'm the one i I always watch this shitload of video at at home and like try and plan like the stuff we're gonna do for the future but then on the court he kind of steers the ship a little bit energy wise so it's it's a good fit I think that's always been one of our strengths is the ability to, like, figure things out on the fly. Yeah. And we communicate well, like, during the game. So, and that's just, yeah, that's just chemistry for sure. Did you know each other well at all before you started playing? I know, obviously, you probably ran into each other on the world tour and whatever, but. I mean, yeah, just from traveling on the world tour. And we'd actually talked a little bit, I think it was, like, 2017 in Poland or something when I found out he was going to be an American he was going to switch. Uh, just like we just would toy with the idea, be like, yeah. we'll play together and whatever, but not thinking it would actually come true. And then, then it happened. Yeah. yeah. Just planted that seed early. Yeah, we planted it and just waited. He played with Chase first. Yeah. We right. Just waited patiently. <laughs> <laughs> and then they broke up. He made, I mean, him and Saxton were 
legit. They were good back they, in the day. Yeah. In 2016, I think they like caught fire for a bit and they made, had made a couple semis. Clogging for didn't they podium? I think they got I think bronze. They podium there. They podiumed in Japan too. I think maybe uh, silver or something. Japan. Um, what was that? Yokohama. Yeah. Oh, that was brutal. I remember that one because so that's when hot. they dumped me right after that one. <laughs> so, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Did we talk about that on the last? Uh, <laughs> On the last uh, hate episode? you, Nick. Glad hate I retired you. you. Still hate you. <laughs> Blocked you ten times in the first like eighteen points. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Nick, but he screwed me over real hard, so <laughs> I had to retire him. Yeah, because you guys—I mean, you were in good shape. We were in good shape. Yeah, like we had just passed you and Johnny because mm. we got like a uh, third in the St. Pete Grand Slam. Um, Is that the one? The Casey and Jake one. Uh, yeah. That was a they good show us. for the U.S. We should, Jeez. We should have beat them, like, in the semis. We were up, like, big, like, five or six points in both sets. Um, and then we still almost lost the second set. and But then we lost, like, 15, 13 or something in the third. But that was a good match. I always try and find that one, but I yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah, freaking Nick. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be dumped, though. Get dumped for Phil. Right. Yeah. It helps a little bit. Yeah, when Hyden picked ruined. me up, that was the one thing he said. He said, all right, man, let's do this. But just so you know, if Phil calls, I'm out. Yeah. But I was like, the prerequisite. Like, I was like, yeah. all right, that's fair. Even, even now, you wouldn't be mad if Phil like, picked up your party. You'd be <laughs> yeah. like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of gnarly. That, that's true. <laughs> he's still, I mean, he's just that good. He's so good. Well, you could tell, I mean, he definitely lost the step. Like, he's not even close to what he was. But no. it's crazy that that's still really freaking good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is like, he the best player you played against? Phil, him and Anders for me. Yeah. It's him, him and Anders for sure. Those two. Um, yeah, that's a tough. I would say Phil at the peak of his powers. Yeah, I would pick him over Anders. Um, but it's hard to say that for sure. I would have to watch a lot more. How high would um, I feel like Pete Bruno oof. be on that list? It's just different. Yeah, you can't be the, as dominant as a massive like. Well, it's like Phil, Phil could have gone block. to the Olympics with. Ten partners, I feel right. like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like a really good defender. Yeah. Like you still they could go with a handful and yeah. they'll be really good. It's sort of changing. There's a lot of defenders now, like uh like Perisic, my favorite. Cam will tell Perisic. you. I, I'm always great. Like, watch Perisic. <laughs> Cam, uh, do this. <laughs> but he he can take over with defense and his serve. Yeah. Um, and then even like George takes over games mm-hmm. with his serve. So I think the defenders it's Definitely a trend that's going to continue. They're just going to get bigger and yeah. gnarlier. The Swedish so. defender is unbelievable. Oh, he's ridiculous. Yeah. Have you? I'm sure you've. You're a video guy. I'm sure you've watched European champs. Did you watch? I their? watched the. I watched the finals. Man, um, they, and then a couple other random matches. They slapped around Perisic and Schweiner. That was crazy. It's just. It's crazy. From the amount of situations that they can run their on twos <laughs> yeah. and spread and yeah. everything, it's pretty impressive. Um. Yeah, shoot, those guys. Those guys are good. I feel like people forget um, how gnarly Phil's service game was. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like the angles. I remember because he was like right he at could, the end of his prime when we got there. I feel like the last yeah. year or two where he was still hitting those jump serves where it's like buckle. You have to dive to the sideline and then dive to the side. It was like in front of you. Like I people, wonder how many times. I bet he's got the most career. It's impossible to stat this, but uh, of like hitting the cycle of aces, like right. back One, middle, two, three. this line, yeah. that line. Yeah. Because um, I, I I've definitely seen him do it a few times in yeah. matches. Definitely in practices. It's so rare that you can like with control hit all yeah. three spots. Yeah. Um, with pace. Yeah, with pace. <laughs> but like he's, I mean, that jump serve has been gone for a while. And, yeah, and he'll do it when they're down two in like the biggest match of the tournament. And yeah. like, it's a pretty good chance he's going to score. Yeah. yeah. How's a Sanders serve? How f- far off is that from pretty far. peak, Phil? Like, pretty far? No, nah, really? it's, it's just pace. That's well, why. Sanders okay. hits it harder, for okay. sure. Uh, and Phil's it remains an to be angle. seen, like, because Sander, obviously, <clears throat> he just started. Right. But, uh, but Phil is, like, so effortless. It's like, yeah. That he could just do it in every condition from the bad side, from the good side. Yeah. Um, and the tricky thing with the jump serve is like doing it in FIVBs where the pace is faster. It, it definitely takes, I don't know, it's more difficult than in like an AVP tournament. 
That's why I think Phoenix was kind of perfect for Taylor Sander. Yeah, it was like, oh, for sure. You can take your time. It was indoors, just like indoor volleyball, and no wind or anything, jumpy sand. Um, but at least when we've played him, hopefully it's probably just because it's his first year, but kind of the errors have outweighed the aces. So yeah. it, it hasn't been, like, too nasty to play against. Whereas Phil, like, when Phil was on, just like, you know he's going to make it. It's going to be really <laughs> yeah. hard well, to pass. The angles were way different, too. Yeah, like, Phil yeah. was back buckle. So that thing's coming kind of high on you. Yeah. And then on the sideline, but forward. Yeah, but forward, yeah. Like he had the craziest angle on it, but he's still hitting it. So that's just something you're not used to. So that, like the distance between that one line serve and the back buckle is like, yeah. you can't reach both. You have to almost like guess. Whereas yeah. Sanders is bringing heat, but the trajectory is all close yeah. to the back yeah. of the court. And then his changeup is nasty yeah. when he gets it, but it's you can't compare it to Prime Phil. Yeah, Prime Phil was, was stupid. <laughs> Easily, I mean, the best volleyball player to ever play volleyball, in my in my opinion. Yeah, beach volleyball. I know. It sucks that... The, sure, he would have been an amazing indoor player. Or basketball player. I was talking about this with Kane. He doesn't like contact. I, yeah. I've talked to him about it. He's but like... Just in terms of, like... He could have been, like, a attributes, shooter, Attributes, like, oh, and totally. coordination levels. Totally. I feel like he would have been a great He's white Kevin Durant. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't like contact. Yeah. That's but now, I mean. in the modern game, it would have been perfect. Just yeah, shoot threes. They're not allowed to touch you. Six nine guy with a forty inch vert that can shoot threes. Yeah. Ahead of his time. That's it. Because uh, a Rob, that's what he said when Phil first moved there. He's like, I knew that Phil was going to be like, an unbelievable beach player. This is before Phil was like that good. Yeah. He's like, because we used to play pickup basketball and Phil would make like twenty free throws in a row. He's like, right. you just that kind of touch with your totally. hands is ridiculous. I knew how good he was, even though it was already obvious, but I played Halo with him one time, <laughs> like Halo 2 or something yeah. back in the day, and uh, he was like, out of level, out of 50 levels, he was like 49 or 50, which is so difficult to get to. <laughs> oh no way. And then he, he was just one of those guys that like, you would see Phil, and then like another, whatever, Halo character would arrive, and then the, they would just get headshotted immediately, and you're just like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, <laughs> Like, unbelievably coordinated. Yeah. And I was just like, this guy is next level. So Wow. Yeah, he was a cheat character. Because <laughs> yeah. when he pulls on you, and you're just like, I'm going to rip it at him. And he freaking pokey digs you from <laughs> the, the pocket. With his left hand. <laughs> Bing. Like, with the other hand. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. The freaking 6'9 guy <laughs> is not supposed to do that. He's a... Uh, and he's such a good dude, too. Yeah. Man. We were playing this team in Denver that he had just lost to. <clears throat> And he goes, hey, just let this guy have this swing for like two or three times. And then once you get one block on him, he'll shut down from there. I was like, okay. I told JM. And JM was like, well, I think we should listen to that then. And so we did that. <laughs> it worked perfect. I had like four blocks in a row. I was like, thanks, Phil. <laughs> He's just so smart. Yeah. Not only could he take three-fourths of the court away with his size, but he was smart with it as well. Yeah. yeah That's why you look at his blocking. So it wasn't. He never really made big moves. But he set himself up in the right spots and knew his angles so well. I think he, did, like, he did change a little bit yeah, the I last think he bunch did. of years. Yeah. I think Nick but was it's hard to of, tell. It's hard to tell, yeah, if it was... Well, because Todd liked it for Phil to mostly block, quote-unquote, line. Right. But be taken a lot. And then go press into and the And kind of do this stuff. Yeah. But my theory is, like, I think on the world tour, it's just like the athleticism has just gone it way changed. up. yeah, yeah. So it's not like you can no longer just serve the defender and, like, take away their hit by doing this. Yeah, like, yeah. Like... The ball is crossing up here, so like by you just reaching like that on the net, you're not going to block it. Like, yeah, <laughs> you have to be like doing stuff like that. Yeah, which so of Anders course is, is really like the good modern at. version of it. Anders is yeah, yeah, just making crazy. And his hands are like so close together. Yeah, he's such a freak. Yeah, dude, those guys are ridiculous. They're crazy. Yeah, when I played Phil for the first time, I was like, I hit some balls where I'm like, okay, I see where he's at. I'm going away from him, and then he stuffed it. I was like. Okay, so he can reach different places. Like, this is yeah. different volleyball. And then I did that first time I played Anders. It's like, I'm going sharp, like, far away from him right now. And boom, he reached all the way back. I was like, okay, this is so different those volleyball. Guys were like, like, yeah. You got to play him different. Yeah, you feel a bunch of space. You yeah. Kind of like you in transition, actually. Like, uh, <laughs> where you're like, ooh, that sharp angle's open. I'm going to go for this one. And then all of a sudden, the hands are there. And you're like, dang it. Yeah, it's but, too obvious. <laughs> right. But I think they're just, he can do it up in midair, you know? Like, yeah. he can jump up and then do it with, like, a big swipe. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I have to, like, try to hide. Yeah. Like, wait, 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 wait. The One of the craziest things about watching Anders is that, like, you'll see him, 
and he's in the line, and the Christian isn't moving. Like, he's sitting in the angle, and so you're like, okay, this is line defense. And you'll just see Anders, and he has his line block, and he's like, actually, I'll be taking all the angle as well. Like, he just goes completely rogue. Like, vision doesn't help you. Yeah, you can't really that. scouting so, report their defense. Interesting thing with that team, and another reason I have so much respect <laughs> for them, if you watch their matches this year, they almost never run a line block. Like, like where Anders is on the line, Christian's in the angle waiting for heat. Yeah. Basically doesn't happen, especially world champs. Like, I was watching them play Andre George before we played him, and I was like, dude, I haven't seen a single line block yet. Like, Anders yeah. is basically always in the angle, daring you to swing line. Right. Um, and just to be at the top of the sport and then to just do something, like, crazy like that. Because yeah. even if you watch him, like, 2019, ton of ton of basic situations to start, and then he'll reach and everything. But then all of a sudden they're just doing things that no one else is doing. Yes. Yeah. Christian's just running for shots. Anders is up there just windshield wiping. Yeah. Windshield wipers of doom. Yeah. Like, Christian's always moving behind yeah. them. They're, you can't, like, be like, okay, what do they do? It's like, I don't know, they just run, they just run ball all the time or something. Yeah. It seems like that. It's... It's nuts watching because they, I don't. I think they just call it's just basic read blocking. They blocked angle a ton against Chile. Poor Marco Grimalt. I mean, he just had no answers in their yeah. in their uh, semifinal. Like Chile, they only made like four errors in the match and lost like twenty one sixteen, twenty one eleven. And Marco just like he tried everything and <laughs> nothing worked. I think the idea behind it is we're gonna give a call. Don't let him hit this. And other than that do anything you want so if you know they're not going to hit a low line then do anything yeah and same thing with christian he's like i already know they're not going to hit that so i'm going to go rogue so it's always like we know the one call that we don't want to give up but other than that we're just like fully winging it whereas yeah. most people are like make sh- like stay on my call stay on my call and then react yeah but yeah and then you're christian behind like why would you ever tell anders to not just block whatever you see yeah. if you see something just stuff it and he does it. It's crazy watching. It was the first time I've seen them play healthy in a long time. Because this was only their fourth tournament that they finished this whole year. Because they forfeited out of Stad, forfeited out of Yermala, and forfeited yeah. out of Hamburg. And so they've won three out of four. <laughs> they've been healthy. And watching them again, I was like, okay, healthy Norways. They're on a tier You're of their good own. when you can forfeit four tournaments in this system and still be in the top 16. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's like zeros, right? Or I don't know when they were forfeiting, but... They probably hey. got a couple like ninths, thirteenths, oh, okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah Stad, they forfeited uh, first round out of pool. That's like terrible points. Yeah, especially because that was a 32-teamer, so that was like for... So it was like round of 16, maybe? Yeah. Worse than that. That's the other thing that's wrong with this system. It's showing fans like... They're like, aren't isn't Norway the best team though? Why are they ranked eighth? Yeah. It's like, well, yes, they are. Like, clearly, everybody knows they're the best team, but the system's weird and blah blah blah. Yeah, Brill and Losiak are like, wherever they are in the whole yeah. year. It's like, aren't they like winning? Most they're clearly of the a, a top team. Yeah. yeah, that's the tough part. The three or four, always the numbers next to the teams' names won't indicate necessarily where yeah. they should be. Which I don't the six like. out of eight. It was a little closer. To yeah. That. Yeah. The yeah, there's this massive it. gap between the World Tour rankings, which are just your, like your kind of your gross points throughout the year, and then the seeding. Because you look at the World Tour right. rankings, you're like oh, this kind of makes sense a lot. Yeah, Brower Musen are the, now they're the number one. They just jumped George and Andre. Anders and Christian are two. I think it's George and Andre then Brill Oshiak. It's like all right, those are probably the four best teams in the world right now, given their seasons. The women's side's a little funky just because not a lot of the Americans have played a ton. Like Kelly and Betsy might be our best, and they're like 15. Huh. Even though they're they're playing pretty dang good. Yeah, they are. Do you follow the women's side much? Uh, you watch, you watch a lot of film on the guys. I watch stuff on everybody. Um, I like to watch more women's. Um, I watch some. Like, I'll watch some of the matches if somebody does well. Yeah. Um, but usually, like, volumetrics format. Yeah. Speed watch. Just go, 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 go. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I'm definitely interested in it. Do you watch more of a film of other teams or yourself anything and everything yeah Um, yeah that's something I've like part of why I think like I've been playing some of the best ball first of all having Scott coach has been awesome but like I really just dove in deep where I used to always play with these guys that were like established and kind of defer to whatever they want to do but now that I'm older and like I feel like I know the game so well I'm just like 
fully embraced beach and wanting to learn about it. Yeah. And so now I'm just watching videos of just random teams. Yeah. Good teams, myself. I mean, usually the goal is to get myself better, but mm-hmm. I'm definitely just trying to learn about what the best teams are doing technically. Yeah. Um, and what certain people that are good at certain things are doing technically. So I watch kind of, it runs the gamut. Um, I've been super into like this last year, I've been watching a ton of defense and just trying to learn all about it. Um, blocking, like oh, hard swing stuff. Just trying to pick up a blocker. <laughs> <laughs> defense is I swear trip. to God, everyone will say I'm full shit. I would have been a decent defender. I swear. I believe you. Well, you we can't, you we can't got a preview put of it uh, on that, last I can't time picture in, him, but I believe you. Last time in Central Florida, we got a preview of how good Theo and Phil are. I did all right. I been. threw up an yeah. Instagram story of that. <laughs> <laughs> Me sliding in, getting a one arm dig. Lefty I was playing with Phil, though, so it didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> no jump. My no jump defense is fearsome. <laughs> so that's my fit. You ever play no jump? All the time. It's the ultimate. Like, you stay in shape, it's yep. easy on the body. Best off season. Talk a bunch of shit to people. Yep. So. I yeah. love I never practicing no with jump. you guys. Dude, it's the best. Practicing with them is so funny because Cam <laughs> and Theo love no jump, or at least you love no jump. Cam, does he? I think he likes it. Cam likes it. He, he's a regular. <laughs> we play once or twice a week. Uh, but but this year, I think we were probably like 0 for 20 playing no jump. At the start. <laughs> but then but then I win almost every king of the court when there's money on the line because yeah. I like get fired up for it. But when it's the start of practice, I'm using it more of like a warm up. Yeah. So I'll kind of suck a little bit. <laughs> and your coach a lot of balls will go down. likes it or hates it? <laughs> he hates I think he's, I don't know, yeah. Man, every time, because then after that, like, we'll just go into, we'll serve you guys some balls, you guys serve us some balls, and Davenport's back there. He's just like, fucking no jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking up. But you guys are such a good trio. I feel like you all just balance each other perfectly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is this Thank second you. year with Dav? Yeah. Second year with Davenport? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I kind of worked with him a little bit at random times for like a week or two. Okay. Um, in like 2019, a little bit. I think he's got a great kind of side out philosophy and system. Um, and just a lot of stuff. He's like put a lot of time and effort into his thoughts about the beach, um, which there's some coaches like that. But nowadays for coaching pros, rare. it's pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. Because all probably the best talent and everything they're coaching like college sports now yeah they're making a lot more money than they would make coaching yeah. us right so so yeah so i yeah i love that i think he's of the pro coaches one of the best ones for sure he said a lot of, hermosa was a big weekend for him yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that that was awesome getting the 24th street teams yeah a couple dubs and yeah but i feel like everyone knows but that solidified how good scott is yeah but he's someone the best mark of a coach is if, like, if their team does a little bit better than you think that they would. Then yeah. You, and if that happens a few times, then you just know that it's a pretty good coach for whatever reason. Yeah. And Scott's someone that his teams have just always been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes they'll drop him, and then they won't do as good. So I think it's just, like, a clear indicator when you take everything else out. You're just like, are their teams a little bit better than you think they would be or yeah. no? And his teams are so Mel yeah. and uh, Sarah. Yeah, it was Exhibit yeah, A. That was, that was a tough one. <laughs> that was an Exhibit. I don't know what happened there, but I don't either. When he when he left, things kind of went down, right? Yeah, because I mean they were yeah. it was like Mel and Pav versus April and Alex. Like I feel like every other final. And then, yeah, and they then split with in Dav. Cancun, they they had some issues. Yeah. And then split it up. Yeah. Those are the stories where we got to get them on camera, really, to yeah. really bring the I know outside audience it, into but, our yeah, sport. Yeah, but I don't want to. You can't share. I can't share that. Yeah, yeah. that's what the reality TV shows want. Yeah, that's for the. <laughs> or one of them. One of them can talk about. That's it, for TMZ Sandcast. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> we need we need someone to be at the TMZ of volleyball. Yeah, not us. No, we get asked to do it all the time. It's like, I think that people are willing to come on because we're not that. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. We wouldn't we be able to get the guests. The players. Like, we're here for the players. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just chat about volley. And we just don't care about most of it as yeah. much as we gotta have. Uh, we got to have Pav back on. Yeah. She's, she's uh, local. Yeah, she's here. Are you looking ahead to the next guest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this has been good, but I mean, maybe we should get someone else. My wife texted. Theo's out. Number five all the time. He's gone. 
And with uh, our listeners have significantly increased since then, so I think you'll probably just jump right back to the top. Perfect. Take it. <laughs> well, you mentioned that you're playing some of the best volleyball of your career. Like what? Why do you think that is? Like what? What do you think it is about your game? You're like, yeah, this is this feels good. Uh, most obvious. Um, I never really gotten a decent serve. Um, and now, like, I feel like on the whole over the last two years, like, my jump serve has been a really good weapon. Um, if not getting, like, outright aces a ton, which I do sometimes, uh, just putting teams in a little bit of difficulty consistently yeah. and with the higher spinning or passers, which you guys actually deal with very well. Um, so, the yeah. jump serve? Get, yeah. Just... Because for a lot of teams, you get them high and spinny. Oh, yeah, yeah. An extra 5 or 10 feet off, mm. and you're looking at, like, a 10 or 20% yeah, yeah, yeah. increased chance to score. Right. But one of your guys' strengths is, like, you're really good at just putting each other on the net consistently. Handset, So yeah. it's not as much of a weapon against, like, a team like you guys. Mm. But there's that. I figured out hand setting. Um, and then uh, just a lot more comfortable with my offense and vision and that type of stuff. And can mix it up when need be. Um, and I think mentally, just after having been through so many ups and downs and, like, horrible losses, and that's one of the good things in beach, and I think why a lot of older players can do better sometimes is you just, like, you've been through so many things that now all of a sudden when it's, like, 14, 13 and it's your side out, in the past you're just like, oh, my God, this is, like, such a big point. We could win the tournament right, right here. Yeah. And now it's just like, well, ah, whatever. I'm just going to, like, <laughs> like, for me it's like I figured out a mental thing where and just being old where it's just like as long as I did what I meant to do like I, I took a look right I was patient like if they make a play whatever as long as I did the thing that I wanted to do I can live with that and that mm -hmm. makes for better tournaments better playing in the clutch and better finishes um it's just like letting go of like yeah, I guess it's kind of cliche, like letting go of the result, but it's easier said than done. Oh, yeah. Um, and I've sort of gotten in the groove of that. Yeah. But a lot of it's just, yeah, just like I said, like experience over the years and having horrible losses. Yeah. Um, or like and it's being, just not as like visceral anymore. Yeah. Um, you you like haven't put away that that match point and yeah. then like where you're up, whatever, 14, 13, and you didn't put it away. And now it's 14 all like back yeah. in the day, you're like, wow, I just blew that. That was our yeah. chance. But like. It's happened so many and times to you and against yeah. you, whatever. <laughs> you're just like, now we're at 14 all. Yeah. You know? I, to I mean, it is such a veteran sport. And we had so many veterans kind of beating up on us uh, or competing with a bunch of veterans all those years, whether it's like getting calls, like you were talking about yeah. with Jake and Raji and them. And now it's like, oh, are we? We're kind of the veterans now. Yeah. Like, I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting better. It's nice. Most it's sports nice. is like 33. You're like, all right, you guys are old and out of here. Now it's like those guys are in their prime. Yeah, it's it's crazy to look at like Rob Gronkowski's like our age. Yeah, right. And he just seems like just he's beat like up 53. and done. <laughs> yeah, just in, yeah, it's crazy in general in sports. People are playing longer and longer. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how much of that is like the the way people train now. Yeah, I think it's training and diet. Like people and are a lot smarter thing. with training. Like yeah. I know in basketball, they used to just like crush hammer weights that like yeah almost yeah overtrained with the weights and then like take no games off and stuff and now people get a little upset about it but now they like regulate the minutes and everything right right steph curry's never played more than like 36 minutes in a game right or, oh like, really i know they I have mean, jump probably he has but like yeah but he's always on like 36 but they're 36 that. minutes for like his ankles or whatever the dutch guys have um they practice with jump counters on, maybe even play, yeah. like, at all times. Their coaches really? know how many jumps they get. Yeah. Well, whatever they're doing in the Netherlands, it's working. Yes. <laughs> that is a deep federation. Jewish. They're Freaking biking dust. everywhere. Yeah. God, man. <laughs> yeah, they are. Biking, eating street waffles. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Just being really direct and cold and callous in their comments. Because <laughs> 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 you look, I mean, Borman's, like, York de Groot gets hurt. Borman's like, all right, who's next? Matthew Emmers, yeah. come on up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, we'll just ball out. And de Groot, people were giving de Groot the credit for being the better player on that team. Yeah. Yeah. He was smooth. Yeah. He is smooth. He's not done. He's, yeah. He's probably just done for the year. But mm -hmm. I wonder what, uh, what Borman's will do when de Groot comes back. Because him and Emmers are playing damn good. 
I yeah, feel like Miz, I kicked Miz off his uh, his winning streak. Yeah. Gamers, when I lost to him in Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a big confidence was boost for them, one. I think. Yeah. Emers Bormans. Yeah. Amers Ben Verkoven. <laughs> yeah, right. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I wonder if I can hit low angle through this big guy. On the seven foot guy. Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we played that in like, Tlaxcala and they were like they were pretty good. We also played Luini Peninga in the the round to get last place. And they <laughs> when you watch the re- we watched the replay, like we saw that they lost and then we're like, what the they were up. They won the first set, and then they were up 20 to 15 in the second set and lost to Brower Musen. Oh. So, so then we're just like, ooh, this, this team's pretty good, huh? They blew it. They were so stupid. They were, it was Damn. like 2015, and they're just going to the crowd. They're like, yeah. yeah. Peninga like, in them? Speaking of, like, rookies just blowing it. Yeah. Dude, what about against <laughs> us in uh, World Champs? Trevor had I didn't COVID, yeah. and he literally wasn't moving the whole match. <laughs> they served me every ball. Yeah. And then Trevor, what, I think he got blocked once or something happened. And I was like, hey, they're going to serve you. Suck it up, side out, Just and make them serve me it. again. <laughs> and, I was ma- and I was, like, really chill with making errors, too. Yeah. I was like, if I keep making a few errors here and there, then they'll... Right. Like, it was that bad to yeah. where I'd, we didn't want it to serve Trevor. No warm-up, just sweating, standing there. And they served me every ball and missed a bunch of serves. It was just amazing. They've had... They, they've been... Uh, up and down, they've had some good wins. I mean, they smacked Chase and Troy in that Tlaxcala qualifier. And then, they, I mean, they've had some big ones. Yeah. And then they have, like, some weird ones, like 2015 Brower Musen. They had a fun match against Brower Musen in uh, Hamburg. So, like, everyone's getting yellow cards, a lot of shit talk, and it was fun. I saw, yeah, a little bit of the, the Instagram stuff from that. Yeah. Yeah, and they beat us in Itapema. Um, okay. Yeah, they're it definitely a team that can match. be hot. Yeah, well, their task is a roller coaster. It's the Dutch style. They just they just hit it. Dang, they yeah. just don't shoot. So like, we always go to the match. It's like, well, either I get a bunch of blocks and we win, or I don't and we lose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right, right. It's like all the pressure's on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you might get a dig or two, but probably not because they're just gonna <laughs> smash it. Right. But yeah, we played them and like freaking. There was only lights on one side of the court. It was like pitch black out, and then there was like an ambulance in one corner, and like the first play of the game, I just was all over Luini and I got tooled and I like I was like I didn't really see that very well and then I was got tooled a few more times I was like yeah. you're screwed <laughs> this is over <laughs> I can't block him <laughs> oh, it's boy. been man it's been a long year and you guys you're, 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 you're totally you're shutting down we're shutting down till potentially a split, we a split like, blocking special in December <laughs> yeah yeah maybe for the fans for yeah, eight for the fans, fans right. yeah but my eight fans only want my Instagram comments. They don't care about my volleyball. <laughs> you're gonna well, you're gonna gain a big following after this one. Yeah, at least we'll give seven the sand to cast ten. Bump. Yeah, it's hilarious when we're just talking about how good Mole is. It's like all we, it's like all we did. Just yeah, Mole and, Mole and Phil are way better than us. People um, like that. As I said though, sand cast, we just talk about whatever comes up. Yeah, exactly. And well, once you have Mole's... your first episode, then the second episode we just yeah, you know, we intro the player, their background. Nowadays, it's like everyone's been on. We just it's a free for all. Shoot the shit. Yeah, it's just a chat. Yes, Who's sir. your most most featured uh, athlete? Um, Probably by default, Trevor. Trevor right? Just because yeah. he's kind of around. How's yeah. Trevor as a guess? Uh, hilarious. Hot or cold? If, if you uh, <laughs> depends if he has uh, booze in his system. Yeah. Sober. <laughs> if there's whiskey in it, oh, sober. you just let him go. Sober Trevor and, uh, and whiskey the kids, Trevor and the kids are too to stop different. listening. <laughs> <laughs> every every whiskey Trevor episode, I have to record a disclaimer. It's like there's language. If you have kids in the car, yeah. <laughs> skip this one or save it. <laughs> yeah, you guys so should probably, do a separate Trev. beeped episode, like on NPR. <laughs> yeah. This American life. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, maybe uh, April. I mean, April's been on. Three, April's is pretty shit. April. Three, four times. Put down like a whole bottle of wine. We put a few bottles of wine yeah. down with April. That was. She can party. She can sure. Oh, yeah. Seen her back when they the used right to have player they, parties. Oh, yeah. Seen she her would do, do the worm. worm on the yeah, more than once. <laughs> yeah. So. That was her go to party. Remember trick. that? On, on like, the floor. On the was, dance floor. There was money in tournaments and they would have player parties. Like, and then insane if you did well, player you just, parties. Yeah. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. You almost wanted to lose because the player party was that night. Yeah. 
you're like, you're really bummed out. And the money Definitely for fifth not. place was good enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, you get a fifth and you go party. What'd you, it was like eight or 9,000 each. 8,500 back in the 8, day. 8,500 each for a fifth. And now it's like 4,000. 5,500 for a ninth. Like, you'll take that. Yeah, yeah. I'd take that. Yeah. Especially what I have to do for a ninth is win one match. So, <laughs> yeah. And the World Tour is, I'd say, deeper now. Oh, yeah. On the men's side, for sure. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, it's gotten more difficult. Yeah. But the players' federations cool. with like a million teams. Yeah. It's welfare volleyball now. In the <laughs> so if you <laughs> yeah. have like a federation willing to front all the money, you can field a ton of teams. I it's, can't imagine like if you're a country with no money, you basically can't play. Yeah, right? like, like I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, why, why like are you, why are you playing? playing? Yeah. I get you have it. to fly there. If you win a futures, what is it, a thousand bucks to split? Yeah. <clears throat> so if you're gonna have a coach, like forget about it. Oh yeah. If you have to travel anywhere far, forget about it. Yeah. Like, even a challenger. Like, yeah. You're gonna lose money unless maybe you win the tournament. <laughs> yeah. What do you exactly. get for winning a challenger? Uh, I split eight. And that's gonna be interesting split when qualification eight. starts. Yeah. Like teams that are gonna go to the Olympics are gonna play a lot of challengers mm-hmm. because. Getting a top four and a challenger could definitely be a usable finish. For sure. Yeah, if they keep everything like, the same. Why would we change the prize money? We just have the Olympic bid, and you have to do whatever we yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> That's the tricky part with the whole I thing. It's that. like, from their side, handle. they're just like, why would we pay you if you keep playing? Right, right. exactly. And then so, that's why yeah. we're standing strong right now, Theo. We <laughs> want to play, but we're boycotting the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they're really going to hurt because of it. <laughs> I've been down since last year, though. If anyone wants to do anything, I'm in. Like a not playing situation. Yeah. It's like so little money that it wouldn't make a difference. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. As long as none of us play and yeah. none of us are gaining points, sure. Yeah. yeah. There's really no point in going out there. It takes a big effort. And then <laughs> it takes a lot of people. the next people in line are always going to step up and take it if top players step down. Yeah. But we already know that. Yeah. Just like the Paris. Uh, Thing yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but after one year of elite challenger futures, where are you guys at? I think uh, I think that we should just, like the players could just ask the question, like what do we have to do to get the elite 16s to 32? Like what numbers do we have to hit and how can we get there? Because I, I think an elite, like a, the top tier of 32 teams, I think, is perfect. But why do you need challengers, then, if we're going to do 32, right? I mean, I think you, you don't need it, right? Well, if it was 32, yeah, you, you don't, don't need, need the challengers, yeah. Yeah, it's just you have the... That it's would kind of revert to the Grand Slam Open, basically, yeah. which right. is 32. And I don't remember what was wrong with that. Well, from, from a player's money. standpoint, money. it was fine, yeah. I think the, the problem always... And that's the part that, like, I don't know as much about is beach volleyball tends to lose money. <laughs> right. So, like, yeah. And now it's... Whatever CVC Capital who took it over, but it sounds yeah, they like they don't want to lose money, so it yeah, makes sense that they're going to be money. like cutting where they can. Same uh, as Bally's, like we have these two massive yeah. businesses running them now, rather yeah. than like Donaldson and the FIV itself. Yeah, and they yeah. don't care what we were making right. ten years ago. Right, so. exactly. Yeah. And like the problem, like you say, if the players like, well, if we just make the Elite Sixteens as profitable as possible, they'll expand to a thirty-two. But if if a hedge fund's running it, they're like, well, if this is really profitable mm-hmm. yeah. and then adding 16 more teams probably isn't actually going to add any profit but take away from it, then there's no need to expand, which is like the whole issue with when a sport's just owned by something. Yeah. Like no one can sell the NFL, no one can sell the PGA or NHL, right. but you can go ahead and buy beach volleyball if you want. It's That's crazy. True. Like CBC owns an Olympic sport. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, that is kind of annoying. <laughs> like, so it's like... If you make them more money, they have no incentive to really change the system. But, like, are they making make money them? on the futures? Like, why does AVP loves putting on these low-level events, a lot of them, and saying that that's part of the prize money they're giving out? FIVB is doing the same. Like, what do you mean? We're putting up record amount of prize money. Yeah. Like, 45 <laughs> futures where no one can make <laughs> yeah. any money. It's like... Those must be profitable. Those that must be their foundation for their business, yeah. right? I mean, I think they charge a franchise, like kind of a, tr- a franchise fee, like all right to use our or licensing to right. use the volleyball world FIVB name to be sanctioned by us. You have to pay X amount of dollars, right. and also the promoters put up all the most of the prize money. Uh, I think don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the prize money, a lot of the costs of the tournament are put up by the promoters themselves. Yeah. Huh. 
Well, which is why Norway doesn't have tournaments because I think they lost a ton of money in their Stavanger. past tournaments. Stavanger they're like was still great. paying it off. No way. So yeah. Oh, that was a good player party, by the way. Stavanger, I didn't go uh, when I was there, but I heard it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, bad. So, uh, we'll see what system. I think whatever. I'm. Yeah. There's no point in worrying about it. <laughs> yeah. There's not really much we can do. Yeah. Are you, but you guys are boycotting that. We can talk about it on the soundcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be like a, a very loose boycotter. I wouldn't like be explaining my opinions or anything. I'm definitely right. not. I'm too busy with the kids and stuff to like yeah, yeah, yeah. be on the player chat. Just like I know constructing they're, arguments they and stuff. They ask people to like take part of the board. I'm like, uh, I can't. Granted, I'm on USA Volleyball board, so I'm like, yeah, I'm already doing way too much. Yeah. Yeah, I just wish it was, I guess my hope was that the elites would at least be like. I'll leave it. You're out, Theo. Okay, you're not coming <laughs> back. <laughs> last, last appearance. Of the show. It's nice <laughs> knowing did. you guys. Um, I was hoping it would like be promising going into next year. And so it so almost is after the Rulon Garros one, but most of the elites, like it was crazy that a lot of the challengers had way more fans and like. When you're just watching the stream, you're just like, this is sick. Like, it's yeah, like, full we stadium. need to go back to Telax Top Kala. teams playing. This is awesome. But it's a challenger. <laughs> right. And then the elites are just, like, empty stadiums because yeah. they're charging a ton or whatever. Totally. So that was disheartening to me. It's like seeing how the elites and the world champs, like, play yeah. out. Uh, that one it was didn't rough. give me a lot of confidence, mm-hmm. I guess you could say, like, going forwards. Yeah. Well, world champs in Mexico in 2023, they'll show up. What are the three cities, by well, the way? I think. Yeah, Mexico. Rosarito was All the brutal. events in Mexico are awesome. Rosarito was not good. Yeah. I think Tox was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed driving city. down there yeah. and playing there. I'm down to play there again, but it wasn't yeah, a good Gala, fan All the North Secas I've ever been to in Mexico Amazing. have been packed. Yeah. you got to go to like local towns because yeah. everyone in the city show up for any sporting event in Mexico. Yeah. Whereas Rosarito is a little bit of That's a tourist kind of, town yeah. and no one cared. But it was nice to drive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm excited. I, I think Mexico World Champs is going to be. Good. I think awesome. that'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. And is it multiple cities or is it all Tlaxcala? I think multiple. It's multiple. Yeah. Okay. I which hope is, I'm in Tlaxcala. Just kind of cool. Yeah. That city was, was awesome. Sweet. Yeah. You didn't go. I did not. Big mistake. <laughs> that yeah. bull in ring was sight. fun, dude. Did the you play on center court? I do. At practices the day before the tournament, there was like thousands of people in the stands. Yeah. Just watching us practice. Amazing. It was like the coolest I was thing. like, uh, where were we? A few years back. Um, South of Cancun. We got the bronze and Jake and them won. Chetumal. Chetumal. They packed, packed it. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And you're walk everywhere you walk, like you're like yeah. a celebrity. They don't yeah. even know who you are. Mexico. If you're short, yeah, they don't even bother. They don't know that you're a player. <laughs> like Adrian, the, the physio. Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Just pushing them out of the way. Yeah, yeah. move. Get a photo with a tall uh, professional athlete yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The same moment was hilarious. He needed a police escort. To get it out of the like out of the he's qualifier, tall, big, and handsome. Yeah, yeah, he like just beat the Taylors, oh, okay. and he's trying to get out, mm-hmm. and he's just got this mob around him. Yeah, and that he was had a crazy like match. five police. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it was awesome. Good Mexico stuff. was cool. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming on again, Theo. My pleasure, guys. Good times, bro. Good yeah. hanging out, just chatting about whatever came up. Might try to <laughs> poach in on your guys' pool session with Gabby. Stay away from them. Uh, <laughs> not your sponsor. No, I'm, yeah. I'm more just yeah. You're just so good in the water. You're gonna make me feel extra bad. No, I'm but gonna Kane's be. I'm gonna bad, be think, on so. guard, lifeguard for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll bring the blow up thing, so I don't bring have to give you real CPR. <laughs> just uh, yeah. I'll just use the bag. <laughs> I'm gonna borrow my daughter's like little life jacket thing yeah. that she wears. In the Perfect. Ocean. Good luck getting to the bottom. <laughs> You're yeah. going to be holding the weights, just bobbing there. Larry, I need more. I can't get, can't get down. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Right, Thanks, Theo. Enjoy the offseason, brother. Will do. Appreciate it. Snow jump. Snow jump season. Yeah, no jump champ right here. <laughs> Shoots. Shoots. Shoots.